von Andersek welcoming you to Simple Faith, a series of discussions sponsored by Second Eighth Week Ministries. Our panel of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers will answer your questions about the Second Covenant faith to help you experience the simple faith of Jesus Christ. Our panelists will be answering such questions as, What does it mean to build your faith? How do you do it? What does it mean to touch Jesus? How does that happen? What is the spiritual priesthood? What are the spiritual tools of Jesus' covenant? And much, much more. Our goal is to equip you with easy-to-understand guidelines that you can put to immediate practice as you study the courses offered by Second Eighth Week Ministries. May God bless you as you begin this journey of covenant faith that Jesus made simple for us. Okay, in Revelation chapter 17, we have a description okay, of the false religious system, the FRS. Okay, and the, the false religious system is, a, is an establishment or uh, as the, uh, the spirit of this world, okay, the spirit of this world. He identifies this particular priesthood through the woman. God elected a woman as the false church because the holy city is the, the true church. The holy city is the mother of us all. This is the mother of harlots. Okay? The holy city is the mother of us all. The, the holy city, New Jerusalem, is the, the true wife of the Lord who is building his house. But this right here is like um, Hagar. Okay, Hagar did not build the house of Abraham. But the child that she born to Abraham was separated from him and became his own entity. Even though that there was a similarity there, so we have the uh, the Esau Christians and the Jacob Christians, we have the Ishmael Christians, we have the Isaac Christians. And uh, what's amazing is that the Lord used similarities for deception. Similarities for deception. Because um, Ishmael also had 12 princes, okay, as Jacob had 12 princes. Okay, Jacob had 12. Uh, Ishmael had 12. Now what's really even more amazing, if you go back to the book of Genesis, when you read the genealogies of Cain, the genealogies of Cain are very similar to that of genealogies of Adam. Very similar. The names, the similarity of names. Even Enoch. There's the Enoch of Cain. There's the Enoch of Adam. And that's why the apostle Jude makes distinction concerning Enoch the seventh of Adam. Okay, not Enoch the, the, the second or the third from Adam, which would be, of course, uh, Adam's grandson, Okay, but it be through Cain. Okay. So, right from the very beginning, God elected in his wisdom to show how uh, Satan would use similarities of names and numbers to bring deception and to bring contradiction and to bring contrast and bring conflict. But God authorized that for the choices of faith. Okay, that those which work by the spirit of the world would mate with the mother of harlots, which of course has to do with uh, the, the mating has nothing to do with building a house, but only for pleasure. But when we mate with the kingdom of God, we're, we are as stones, precious stones, holy stones, spiritual stones. We're building a house. So in chapter 17, I'm going to start with verse 1. Now there came one of the seven angels who had the seven vials, and he talked with me, saying to me, Come here, and I'll, I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. All right, now, the mother of harlots, waters. Okay, came on many waters. The surface of the earth is two-third waters, one-third earth. That the imagination will rule men. Okay, and because the imagination rules men, Satan has that window. We see at the very bottom right there. The window is in the imagination. The imagination is called the waters. The conscience is at the, t at the, the northern side, which is also called the fire. And that's why God, as a consuming fire, stands at the door of the conscience as our judge and rewards us accordingly. So we shall be saved as by fire. We shall be saved as by fire. The Lord being our, our judge, purges, weighs, and sanctifies everything that comes through the door of the conscience. That's why it's important we walk by faith, not by sight. If you walk by sight, okay, then, you're, then, you have, then you're bipolar. Okay, bipolar, which means instead of the north being the north, the south is the north. Okay? And so the, the sinners 
When they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, they accused Paul of turning the world bipolar. When in reality, Paul is saying, no, no, you're, it's the other, other way around. The, the truth of what we say is setting it right. Okay, but, but the lies turn this way, bipolar. The gospel we preach is turning the, uh, the hearts of the people from the, from the waters to the fire. Okay, and from the south, okay, from the south to the north. Okay, so that's why we, we, all, we set our compasses according to the north and not to the south. Okay? And, and that's the same thing with truth. Okay, now you can see the, the, the great horde that sits upon many waters, okay, which also has to do with the imagination of man as well as the people of this world. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Okay, it goes all the way back to, time, to the times of Nimrod. Okay, Nimrod became the prototype of the kings of the earth. He had a messiah complex. Well, we can see that the, that particular mindset was carried even into uh, up the, into the Caesars of Rome, where they looked at themselves as a deity. Kings looked at themselves as a deity. Pharaoh looked at himself as the offspring of the Watchers, as Hitler looked at the Germanic race as the offspring of the Watchers. Okay, that they were going to be supernatural, that they had an assigned position to rule the world. Okay, well, it was interesting is that because of Adam's awareness of that seed of the inheritance as being God's, how the, the fallen watchers inflamed that in the direction of the imagination to where one race would want to rule over the other. Okay, or one philosophy will rule over the other. Okay, or one political entity will want to rule over another political entity. Okay, we can see that throughout the, the world history. God authorized that in order to uh, create new boundaries, to birth new nations, and also to bring a instability among the heathen that they would call out to God. So God would raise up one, one race of people, one group of people, one philosophy, okay, to conquer another okay, in order to punish the heathen, the Gentiles, for their sin. Okay. And at the same time that God would uh, commit that, to commit that act, there was also the presence of truth. Okay, during the Babylonian captivity, God raised up Ezekiel and Daniel and Mordecai, okay, as well as also um, uh, Rabbi Ishmael, who also uh, wrote Third Enoch. God raised up particular individuals to establish God, His presence, God's presence down here. Those which would seek Him would hear the voice of the Lord to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Mordecai, or Esther, the queen, that God would raise up, uh, it was like fire and water. He okay, like fire and water. He okay, truth being fire in the midst of water. Okay, Daniel was the fire in the midst of Babylon. Okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fire in the midst of Shushan the palace, as an example. Ezekiel was this fire okay, uh, by the river Eli, where, uh, where they were taken captive, but they were as lights. Okay, they were as lights, fire in the midst of water. During the time that we're living, called the beginning of sorrows, you're the fire in the midst of water. Okay, and the water has to do with turbulence of the center. The beginning of sorrows, that's the turbulence of sinner. That Lord okay, is blowing upon this dimension and keeping the nations in a state of being unsettled so that they will call out to him. So God is smutting the watermelons to release the seeds all over the world. Christian churches are being burned. Christians are being persecuted and separated all over the world. Okay, even the, the churches in the states. Okay, there was a, a arsonist okay, and and so, and in and, and two particular states here, we're burning churches, okay? So that people, when they would go to church, wouldn't find a church. If the church wasn't burnt down by a narcissist, God would send a tornado, and the tornado would smite the town and destroy the churches. So what God was doing is that he was breaking open the denominational watermelons to release these people that had the last chance for the rapture, to free them, okay, from their denominational uh, hypnosis on, on those particular denominational uh, theme traditional thing. So the mother of harlots was being whipped okay, in order to release from her those which she was holding captive. Okay, so what the Lord said there, remember what Isaiah said, come out from among them. And Isaiah said that. Come out from among them. Well, John says the same thing. John said it in chapter 18 of Revelation and Paul said the same thing in Corinthians. Okay, that there has been a tearing for a mending. There has been a smiting for a healing. And God is doing the same thing today. Okay, that there has been a tearing for a mending. There has been a smiting for a healing. Okay, that's what Hosea says, uh, says, the prophet Hosea. 
That's why he says, come, let us return unto the Lord. Can I see the word return? Come back in the covenant while you have a chance. Okay, because he has torn and he was hit and he will heal us. He has smitten, he will bind us up. After two days, he revive us. And the third day, he will raise us up. That's a rapture. The rapture, the third day. We are in the third day, the third day of the rapture. After two days of darkness, which the churches went through, God is tearing and smiting to release these people so that they have a last chance to get out of this dimension before his wrath is poured forth. So we got waters and fires with whom the kings of the earth to commit a fornication. They build an empire of the imagination through Nimrodic philosophy. Nimrodic. So Nimrod was the family of Noah, the great grandson of Noah. And uh, Nimrod would hear Noah reading out of the books of Enoch uh, and telling about a great ruler should come upon the earth. And Nimrod, hearing these things from his great grandfather, became ambitious to want to become the next ruler. In order for him to do this, he would have to exert himself to show his skills and became Nimrod the Great Hunter. So Nimrod was acknowledged by a lot of people as having leadership as Esau. Esau was also a great hunter, wasn't he? Very skilled with the bow and the arrow. Now, when you read the book of Revelation chapter 6, the white horse on the man on the white horse also has a bow. Okay, the great hunter. Nemrotic philosophy, a conquering system or a false religious system will emerge and will be smitten and he's going to go forth to the, on all parts of the earth. And we see this happening. We see the history the unfolding right before your eyes. You are living in history right now. Okay, so after the rapture of the church takes place, we come back in seven years and the next generation is emerging. They're going to ask you about this time that you're living. And they're going to ask you, what was it like in the other time before the Great Tribulation? And, we'll, and you'll be able to share with them, okay, concerning when Satan was ruling the earth and when the face of death was seen everywhere, iniquity was twofold and people were rejoicing in it. Okay, and man was, uh, man, Adamites were dominating Adamites, Adamites were murdering Adamites, and there was war in the earth and famine and pestilence. God was smiting the earth with all plagues, but man refused to return to him. But God established a testimony, okay, as we can see also in the, in the uh, Noah's Ark. And Noah established a testimony in himself that he was a man of righteousness and that God always preserved a remnant before he brought destruction. And God is also preserving a remnant before he brings destruction right now. The second, eighth week. And Noah was a second week in the eighth person. Okay? So we see history repeating itself. We are living uh, uh, at the, the threshold of the second consummation. The first consummation was in the days of Noah. The second consummation, which was prophesied, we're at the threshold of it right now. Okay, well, let's see what happens. As the watchers rule the earth, as it was in the days of Noah, okay, as it was in the days of Noah, so, so shall also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. If people were living for pleasure, the watchers were ruling the earth. And this is the same thing today. So the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have, made, uh, have been made drunk. See the word drunk right there. In other words, they are seeing double. They, and they were not able to really, they, they were immobilized under, under this influence. They were seeing double and they were immobilized. They couldn't really make any distinguishing factors, no distinguishing factor. They couldn't tell if it was two, two cars coming at them or one. Okay, and with the wine of a fornication. Okay, now wine carries the taste of the soil. Okay, wine carries the taste of the soil. Okay, and a, and a connoisseur okay, is able to tell you to distinguish where this wine came from. That is a professional, if you watch those 007 movies. Okay, you see that one. Hmm. Right, when, uh, when uh, James Bond okay, is challenged is concerning a, a particular brand of wine there, he's able to tell you, you know, exactly the year and where it came from. Uh, of, course he, of course, he's a world traveler. Okay, and being a world traveler, he would know if, it was, if, it was, if this particular wine here was, was, uh, had a vineyard there in, uh, in Italy or Greece or South Africa or in States. And he knew because of the particular, uh, the, it carried the taste of the soil. And now her wine carried the taste of the soil. And it did not carry that which was of faith, but of the soil. So they were drunk with the taste of the soil, which Adam was taken from. Now God cursed the soil, and wine is taken from it. God cursed it. Okay, but we know that God can reverse the curse. And, we, and this is what God said to Peter. Well, God has cursed Okay, that call not you common. And this is what he's telling to Peter. 
So he carried me away in the spirit, verse 3, into the wilderness. And he, of course, he was on a high mountain here. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. This is a place, of the, the reason why he says the wilderness is the place of the wild ass. Okay, the untamed nature of man. Okay, the untamed nature of man in the wilderness there. And I saw a woman, which was Satan's wife. Okay, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, okay, which is as Mount Ebel in the book of the, in the Bible there, Mount Ebel. The places of the cursing. There's two hills. The place of blessing and the place of cursing. So God uh, was teaching us to the children of Israel okay, that on Mount Ebel, they were absent of stewardship and they were absent of the priesthood because Judah and Levi were on Mount Gerizim. Mount Gerizim is a mountain of good tidings because they had stewardship and priesthood. But the false gospel is on Mount Ebel. It's interesting that they would use the word Ebel, which means the place, the place of a curse. Place of curse, Mount Ebel. Okay, in Mount Ebel, they pronounced every curses. All the curses are in Deuteronomy. Cursed is the man, okay, on Mount Ebel. But on the Mount of Blessing, he said, blessed is the man. The scarlet covered woman there. Now notice that, okay, all the priests were males, but she assigned herself uh, to be the priestess, the high priestess of the system or known as the wolf slayer. Okay, so he came me away in the wilderness, uh, uh, into, in the spirit, into the wilderness, verse 3, and I saw a woman upon a scarlet colored beast, which is as the Mount Ebel, full of names of blasphemy. Now, blasphemy also has to do with the uh, similarities, but no substance. 